Hey everybody, it's Jim and I'm back. I have this tutorial on how to set up a basic, basic, very basic, Ableton Live uh, two-track DJ template. And it has a EQ3, an auto filter, uh, side A, side B, the volumes, the crossfader, and pretty much whatever else you would like to set up. So, let's get started. I have a crossfader here, and what I did with that, I brought down a multi-slider, and you'll notice when you bring down the multi-slider, it will look a little different. So to fix that, you go over here, click horizontal, and click bipolar. You'll see what that does. I'll leave it up for you to try it. I'm trying to get these kind of done quick. One thing that probably annoys me more than anything is people who don't want to try things themselves. And you are not going to learn this software without doing that, so have fun. I basically brought down, again, two uh, faders, just regular faders. Adjusted the size, you can adjust the color over here in the properties tab. So with this fader, what I did is you'll see up here you have a monitor and I brought down the monitor and na named it track A and you have track B or deck A, deck B, whatever you'd like to call it. Um, I'm used to calling them tracks with working with App Ableton. Um, so well, anyway, what I did with that is I brought that monitor down on to this uh, fader and in itself that does nothing. But I went over here, named it track A, and that's what it displays right here. And in the value uh, section, you, in order to, for this monitor to take information from that fader, you have to tell it to display that fader's value. So select that master, or not master, sorry, monitor. And in the value field, here's one tip. You're going to want to learn to name things. Name them short. Name them something very intuitive to you. And it will make things way easier on the programming side of things later on. So back to that, like again, this I named my, my fader, fader A. So in this monitor value field, I'm going to type in fader A, period, and I want it to take the X value from that fader. So I type X. Now you'll see originally that it these faders bring in a value from 0 to 1. Now in order to multiply that to display like I have on track B, 0 to 100, all we're going to do is where we just enter that fader A dot X, in the value field, we're just going to type times 100. And now you have it. Now you have it. So concerning these, the rest of this fader, what I also did was I went in here and in the cursor mode, I turned that on to cap only. And what that does is it means I have to touch this cap in order for it to move this, basically. So if, what you'll see, if I turn to the iPad, you literally have to touch it. If I touch down here, nothing happens. Now, real quick, I'll switch that cursor mode to limited. Now you'll see what happens. You don't want that on faders. Not at all. You do not want quick volume spikes like that. Um, if for some reason you do want to set it up for that reason, go for it. Um, you can do whatever you want. So I have that set to cap only, and the physics set to interpolate. Again, go through and toy with these settings. Find what you like, um, and that will help a huge, huge amount. So I did the same thing with the master fader, and then moving on over here to the pads. What I did with the pads was I brought down a pad section, Go over to the Properties tab, change the rows to 8. 
and you can change it to whatever you would like, but I wanted you know, eight clip views or eight clip selectors, so that's what I did. Now, for also this quick map button, you would want to clip, click that because what that's going to do is over here in this controller, you don't want this to be originally when you drop it down it may show up as seven to seven you do not want that for what we're using this for you want these clips or you want these pads to individually select different clips so when you hit this button it immediately changes it to seven to fourteen which assigns these to individual controllers so that's what I had to that um, the behavior I have mine set to 00100. Again, go in, test it out, have fun. Now, I also have the EQ section, and that would be this whole section right here. The low, mid, high, low kill, mid kill, high kill. What I did with this, again, basic fader, X value, and I don't have that displayed because, and that's what that would do, you can label it as well. Um, for me, I'll keep them on for you. Um, for me, I'm going to be looking in Ableton. I know what they are. You know, that's the low, that's the mid, that's the high. And that's that. So then for the kill buttons, you have, over here you'll see the low kill B and the low kill text. And that is overlapping each other, so it's kind of weird for me to click on here. So select on the low kill B. And that is a custom button with the behavior set to switch because I want it to switch on, switch off when I select it. So that's that's that. Now I also have the mids and the highs. I did the same exact thing. Then I took a text box, dropped it on top, named it, bam, got it. Same thing with the auto filter. Just made a custom button with the text box over it. It's an on off. It turns the auto filter on, turns the auto filter off. And for the auto filter modulation, I brought down a multi ball. It was set to one ball and sorry. I put this little zero thing in here pretty much just for a, a locator um, for my purposes. And the you can see all my settings here. You can change those, have fun. This I mean this thing has so many options, so so many options, and you'll spend all day messing with this stuff. I mean Hell, not even using it, just setting it up and toying with it. So that's that. Then I went over into Ableton. I mapped everything. Here's my MIDI mapping. And I may include this in a uh, download. Um, again, as you can see, you know, this is mapped to... Nope. That's mapped to there. And yeah, everything's everything's pretty well mapped. So in theory, it does not work. So let me reopen that. Perhaps some programming side went off. There we go. I must have messed with the MIDI mapping inside Ableton somehow. Now I will get rid of that, and I will get rid of this. I was just toying around with this the other day. Um, so, inside my music folder, we'll drop a couple uh, little tidbits I was working on, and set this quantization to zero, so that way it will instantly um, come in. So, I mean, for a quick example, here you go. You can get started. I mean, you can see. So, 
volume down and a little crossfader. And then you can mess with an auto filter. Pretty fun, pretty fun. And then you can Oop. stop the clips, toy around, enjoy. Awesome program. Um, I'll, I'll come out with another video pretty soon, and we'll it will get more advanced. So remember, toy around, have fun. See ya.